so now we are in yerk as the render get, got completed so i've just set the project to sd and the frame range that i need and you can see that uh, there is certainly one thing that, uh, that there is a yellow kind of like uh, bar which is really warm it's because i have just uh, turned the local uh, lo localization policy so that everything is localized in the render path itself and uh, i don't have to like uh, the script won't get heavy because of that so i've just uh, did for uh, like the render which were quite heavy so now you can see that uh, everything is set i'll just need to show you that this is the uh, this is how the comp is looking so what we are missing in this uh, let us just have a brief idea that uh, what what are the things that we need to do is uh, first uh, definitely we need to get the shadow uh, and we will try to match the shadow tone uh, as per the scan and later we need to match uh, the environment slightly towards the uh, towards uh, this and uh, you can see that uh, the blacks are not matching even the blacks are not matching so we'll do the black match as well and you can see that the the window uh, car window uh, it's not looking uh, real, like real, kind of realistic so what we'll do is just try to blend that as well and we'll try to settle this thing which is inside the car uh, which is okay which is, uh, is a part of a chrome so it, it will ca capture such, such amount of light uh, from though it's in inside and you can see the highlighter is uh, slightly dull so we'll just try to add uh, some light on them so what are the ways uh, that CG comping can be done is uh, with the AOVs is that uh, the first is like if you uh, if you suppose you want to work on the beauty you don't want to modify anything so what wh what are the ways of that uh, in industry it is used so that they did just take a merge and uh, like suppose i i want to, to change something in direct sh uh, direct light which is this light if i want to change some some kind of thing over here like even the tone slightly like this i'll go in this and just like uh, come on just add a red light okay and then what I need to do is first I'll just go and tell it to be from and then later on what I will do I'll just plus it okay so now you see we got the, the, those changes and uh, as usually like we just uh, did those changes to the comp without uh, without breaking the layer so this is uh, either one way of doing this thing or uh, with, uh, this is known as a minus minus uh, uv technique which is used in in, uh, in most of the studios we are they prefer going this one when the look dev is really good so like if you see that uh, our look dev is quite good and uh, uh, we can we can prefer this matter the method uh, this is not uh, wrong but uh, definitely it uh, becomes like i'll just uh, have a backdrop thing that let us just call it as why do the hell there it always comes some suddenly towards the pink backdrop okay so direct light that we can name it as a direct light changes so that we know that we are changing some amount of direct light so this is one way of doing it uh, and uh, you know the second one which is we are gonna break the comp and we're gonna rebuild the comp that's what uh, I prefer right now because uh, it's uh, not a time consuming thing for me so let us just start breaking the comp so first thing that we need to do is we need to have diffuse I'll just go over here and change this to diffuse and I'll name this as diffuse so that it's easy for me to understand uh, which uh, shuffle this is and uh, we'll just actually increase the font okay and then we'll go over here and we'll add a directional light you see that we have much 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 of layers and uh, the most essential thing is that this crypto mat is really essential and it's really helpful later on uh, i'll just going to show you how to use this crypto mat uh, assets which uh, is rendered uh, from arnold and if the, you don't have get this uh, from like um, if you don't have any kind of setting so you can just uh, google uh, and watch either some of the videos that uh, how to add uh, crypto mats from the render or else if you are having arnold latest version like 
version 4 version 3 then you definitely have this uh, inside it uh, if you have uh, the version 2 so you definitely need to uh, add some uh, scripting work though it needs to be done so I'll just go over here and just choose the direct light which is this and even in the direct uh, light and uh, where is the indirect yeah here is the indirect we have two lights so what i'll do is this is a straightforward lighting setup where we have not uh, used any kind of lighting so that's why it's direct and indirect because it's just coming through the sgri if i would have set up the camera rigs or something so i would have named the lights as a light group one light group two so that uh, like suppose i have the light uh, from there, there is a one light uh, over here coming from over here and the light is uh, slightly for coming from back even it's coming from top then I would have named it as a like one two and light group three which is usually that uh, they do uh, in so the pipeline but uh, we, we don't need it now so I'll just go over here and uh, Always, it's always uh, just uh, choose an operation plus and we have plus it and I'll just go over here and if this is a direct let's go and name it direct we'll go over here and just change the font size so that I just know this is a direct lighting and I'll just try to be as much as clean with the scripting uh, sorry with the node graph So that it's an easy easy win for me this is a direct light and i'll choose now indirect now let us choose indirect where is it ah there is it let us name this as well indirect lighting and uh, change it to 41 and let us just plus it so now you see that uh, this is the indirect light which is bouncing off and it's looking really good and uh, we'll do some certain changes here later on and now we'll need a spec we'll go in specular where is it specular so as you see that uh, we have uh, multiple option for specular which is direct that I have just have a specular from the direct light or else I have, I can choose the indirect light as well for the specular if I need separately but I'm just gonna choose the, this, the, this, the simple one which is specular and uh, let us just screen it this as well so now you see that uh, this is the car is slightly getting brighter uh, because of this and uh, you see that the bonds is uh, the uh, indirect light is too strong so we'll go over here if needed and just try to get uh, indirect light slightly down and then have specular which is kind of mix and you see that we started rebuilding everything and uh, you see this that uh, the sharp lines are going and uh, everything is becoming really subtle according to the scene and uh, let us just have a copy node and we'll go over here copy this from the image the alpha i'll tell you why as well so let us just do that first and come over here so you know that if you don't have copy node so there is no alpha while we're doing this comp so it's just like if you check the alpha it's straight kind of this so once we add the uh, we so uh, like we if we uh, break the everything and then we uh, try to rebuild everything we need to copy the alpha later on and even the like if you want to add depth so you just can uh, copy the depth as well as the depth layer as well properly or else uh, it would be broken over here so the last thing which is uh, i forgot to inform that uh, you just need to unpremult it at the beginning this was the first thing i think so yeah this uh, all premult everything over here the render and you need to pre-mold it later on after alpha so that uh, you don't carry any kind of black values while uh, doing comp so it's a kind of straightforward easy method while merging and uh, doing certain things
let us not just copy alpha and uh, remove this okay there is something wrong why I pre-multed everything let me just check okay uh, that was because of that uh, this done pre mold was over here and I need to change it and place it over here so it's just similar so nothing is getting too much affected now so let us just try to work on shadow now and uh, let us just uh, have a switch uh, I'll just uh, take a postage stamp of this postage stamp in order to know how much we are changing and uh, come on come on baby we'll have it over here and I'll hide this output and have a switch for now so that I just can see compare like how much I'm uh, changing everything as you can see now it's slightly like this was uh, really contrasting and we're just trying to uh, lose up certain things certain values in our comp okay so let us just try to work on shadow first uh, so you can see that we have an ambient occlusion which is this and uh, uh, ambient occlusion is always used as a multiply in the operation so what, what does the multiply does is uh, it's just going to multiply the zero and one in a scan directly by choosing if the one is uh, if one is uh, pro like uh, one, then it uh, they, they won't be any changes if there are certainly the like values like this, and it, uh, it will definitely have changes over here. So what we need to do first is take a constant, and we'll pick this color, so that we can complete our ambient occlusion properly, like this, so that we can multiply it over here. Let me just show you how. So once we multiply it over here, if you don't have that, uh, if you don't have, uh, just a second, if you are going directly straight forward, then you can just see uh, what is the output. That's why we need to have the constant layer setup, and you can see that uh, the shadow is there now. The, the contact shadow is there, and the shots look uh, <laughs> just so itself with the shadow, it started to look uh, really good. And uh, let us just have a shadow as well. So what we'll do is uh, we'll check the shadow first and you can see this is a shadow layer I'll just go and have the shuffle and change it to RGB only yes or uh, I'll just uh, remove every channel keep RGBA and uh, let us just go over here and take this in a comp the either way of doing is we can just take it as in uh, like this which is the ideal way or we can just use the grid so I'll just prefer to go with this now now you see oh, the shadow is getting really dark because uh, I think so the Arnold didn't uh, got the shadow right it just needed to have this shadow this is the one which is there but it, it has the uh, ambient occlusion as well in it like you can see so once we go here and try to uh, try to just get rid of ambient occlusion, we see what we have, what we needed. So what will I do is I'll just go in ambient occlusion and try to settle things over there. So now you see our shadow is almost similar to the one over here, and it has the tone as well, which is like slightly like this, and shadow is looking good. Or else, what I can do is I'm just trying to think uh, what I can do much more to make it better. Yeah, we can do something like this. We'll just go here, and you see this. We have this. Uh, so let us just uh, have alpha in this as well. Okay, so proper alpha. Let us just invert this RGB now we have inverted it successfully we'll go over here and uh, this is an alpha okay so what we need to do is change it this to shuffle and we'll just have the uh, it uh, alpha in uh, all of the rgb channel and uh, let's now you see that we are adding it and we'll try to subtract the ambient occlusion one so once okay why is it not happening let's uh, go here this is good and ah, yeah because it's not there in alpha so you need to add it in alpha as well so now you have alpha as well 
and uh, definitely it is just gonna stencil those so that you can have that thing in your comp I'll prefer to have it this is a RGBA and just this thing now you see that uh, we just uh, having the, those shadows separately which gives us a real good control for our comp and uh, we'll go here and change this is the value one and we can lose this stencil slightly as per our need as I need it I can just use that and I think so I can go slightly darker on shadows so what I'll do is I'll stencil overall and just try to let get this shadow slightly dark like this and we'll blur the shadow because this is way sharp than the real one and uh, slightly one more slight blur really helps a lot and we'll lose certainly this so that we have the contact shadow properly so now you see there's a shadow is almost good and even uh, slightly matching towards that and uh, we'll change it uh, later on as per our need so you see that the ambient occlusion is uh, having the shadow over here as well so we need to slightly get the ambient uh, back and we'll try to get this from here only so that our shadow feels really much more realistic uh, not the one uh, which is which was uh, the causing too much of shadow over here as well it has a really good direction and we have now the direction of the shadow really good so this was just an adding the uh, and having the setup layered completely proper so that's what we did in this video so in our next video we'll do the grading stuff and uh, the fine tuning stuff as well so that we can uh, kill the shot within a sp short span of time in comp and the look dev is really good uh, so that's why we don't need to change much with the colors and i hope uh, you enjoyed watching this video guys please do subscribe to my channel click on the bell icon thank you guys